Hi, this is Mike Regan with Transact's Two Minute Warning for the week of August 22nd. And in this week's Two Minute Warning, we're dusting off the crystal ball to make you aware of some important things you should consider as you prepare your freight budgets for 2023. Folks, this is one of the most challenging two-minute warnings we put out on an annual basis. It's where we talk about freight budgets. Now, I've heard from a bunch of shippers lately that they really, really need to prepare an accurate freight budget for 2023. Let's face it, the last couple of years have been really, really tough on freight budgets. So the challenge here is this is something that we could talk about for at least an hour or two or more, but we only have a couple of minutes, so let's dive right in. First thing you need to know is the uncertainty in the transportation environment because we have some contracts that are not yet resolved. On the rail side, by the middle of September, the two parties must come together or they could potentially have to live with a solution that's been proposed by the Presidential Emergency Board. That solution calls for an increase of 22% in labor cost over a five-year period and has some other provisions that will be more costly for the railroads. Over on the West Coast, we have the International Longshoremen Warehouse Union and the Pacific Maritime Operators. They don't have a contract yet and that will affect the cost at the West Coast ports. Now on the ocean side, we are seeing some good signs that the rates will come down from 2021. You know, you got used to paying 20 to 25,000. Good news is we're seeing rates of 8 to 12,000 for contract and potentially lower in the spot market. But one of the other things that offsets that is the increased cost for drayage as a result of AB5. No one knows how AB5 is going to shake out. Now, one of the things we covered in last week's two minute warning was for truckload and LTL carriers. They have a cost structure that is significantly higher than it was a year ago. Higher driver cost, higher insurance, higher equipment, etc. You get it where we're going. And on FedEx and UPS on the parcel side, they continue to be very disciplined in pricing their services. Now we've also seen the United States Postal Service here come out with a recent announcement that their rates are gonna be going up. And the good news is they said they're not as high as FedEx or <laughs> UPS. Now where does that what does that mean for you as you prepare your budget? Well, overall, you could say, well, if we're going in a business as usual approach, taking into account all the things that we're looking at, we could see increase in freight costs of 7 to 11%. Now, if you don't want to accept a 7 to 11% increase, there are things that you can do to lower your freight costs, and it isn't necessarily rate driven with the carriers. There are three things that you could do that would immediately reduce your freight cost. You simply need to send me an email, give us a call. I'd be happy to share those with you. And when you add it all up, there are things that you can do that will give you a more accurate freight budget and something that allows you to get your hands around your cost. We make all of this information available to you because with each and every two minute warning, we're here to remind you we're on your team, we're here to help, and we're passionate about seeing you be successful. Thanks for your time.